to uh, today's theme, uh, which is um, long-term growth potential inclusivity and the country-specific recommendations. Uh, and here to address us from the perspective of the European Commission is the Director General of Employment, Social Affairs and Inclusion uh, at uh, uh, the European Commission, Michel Serbo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me uh, today. Um, it's a sunny day in Dublin and it's also a sunny economy here. And um, I, I want uh, maybe to make a, a reference to Emmanuel Macron since uh, the minister mentioned uh, him. And I want to say the following. Um, Emmanuel Macron was the only candidate in the presidential um, election who stand for Europe. Out of 11 candidates, he was the only one who took the gamble to say, I'm for Europe, and he, says it, he said it explicitly. And that, actually, this gamble worked in the sense that he won the elections, because in reality, most of the Europeans are not against the European project. They want more from Europe, and that's really very much the issue. And so, basically, what the minister says, of course, for me, it means also, united, we win. And so we need to defend the European project, especially now that Brexit is becoming a reality. We have to defend the European project and we have to make it work. That, I think, is really crucial and I will come back uh, to it maybe several times. I just want, um, if I may, to uh, first pay tribute to the cooperation we have, we commission with you, with the Irish authorities, especially on the country-specific recommendations. Um, as the minister recalled, actually, it was important that you said what happened since a few years. It was a deep economic and social crisis in Ireland, and actually a lot of the success of today is due to the reforms that have been introduced and to the efforts, to the sacrifices that were made by people to ensure that these reforms could take place. That is absolutely essential, and this is why it's working today. So I, I think we need really also to think about these people and to the sacrifices that we have made, because today it's about inclusiveness. It's about reducing inequalities. It's about uh, fighting poverty. And I also want, um, if I may, to say that these structural reforms, yes, they were advised by Brussels in some cases, but they were made here, they were decided here, and they were executed in Dublin. So that, I think, is quite important. And again, I want to pay tribute to the collaboration between Brussels and Dublin. I was two weeks ago in Budapest, and I can tell you it's a completely different discussion. In Budapest, I have the impression to be in a different galaxy. It's still Europe, but uh, it's not the same Europe. So I hope we can help the Hungarians to be constructive and cooperative as you are. I think that is really important for what also Emmanuel Macron wants, which is to create a more united Europe. And a more united Europe is not something that happens uh, driven by Germany or by <coughs> France. It is the 28 <coughs> member states together. And again, I will come back to that uh, a bit later. Overall, if I um, look at uh, the uh, economic situation in Europe, yes, we have economic recovery. But uh, this economic recovery is very advanced in some member states. Ireland is clearly one of them. It is far less advanced in other member states. And there are still huge problems, in particular unemployment, uh, to be resolved. And so I think we need, again, to work together, to be united, in order to uh, develop a more competitive, resilient um, economy. And in the package of recommendations which we are putting forward this year, um, there are a few issues that I would like to mention to you because these are drivers of the economy we are seeing after the crisis. One of them is the future of work and the impact of digitalization on the organization of labor markets. Some are saying that basically Jobs are disappearing because robots are uh, replacing workers. I'm not sure it's happening like that. But one thing is sure, there is a big shift in the way labor markets are organized. You see a lot of uh, medium uh, level skills jobs uh, being replaced by uh, digital uh, operations. And you see an increase in high skills jobs uh, and to some extent a decrease of low skills jobs. 
this is something that is happening. It does not mean um, a reduction in numbers of jobs, but what it means is uh, there's a lot of transitions that need to be managed. People are losing their jobs. They need to be retrained. They need to uh, receive some training uh, before they can get into <coughs> employment. And there, I agree uh, with the minister when he said that the big divide in society is between those who have a job and those who are unemployed. This is it. And what makes prosperity, especially in the future, is actually to make sure that everybody can get into a job. And what is happening in the economy is also that having a job does not necessarily mean having a work contract as in the past. We, have, uh, we are seeing, on the European level, a huge emergence of uh, self-employment, or even situations where people combine a traditional employment relationship with self-employment. And this is something that is happening for a lot of reasons, linked with dig digitalization, linked also with the change in the way the economy is organized, and linked also to the fact that many people like to have flexibility in their own individual organization. They can combine uh, their private life with their work better if they combine self-employment with the traditional employment. So this is happening, and what we need to make sure is that this is a positive development. There are some consequences we need to look at in terms of social protection, in terms of access to housing, in terms of access to lifelong learning. We need to make sure that these situations, which are not traditional employment, also gives the same access to social protection as, uh, I would say, a traditional employment uh, relationship. <coughs> what I think is also a factor which we see across the board in all member states is inequalities and divergences. One of the main results of the economic crisis is actually more divergences across member states, but also within member states. And uh, before, the European economy was working as a sort of convergence engine. Over time, almost automatically, convergence would appear. I think the, maybe one significant example of that is after in the enlargement uh, phase with uh, Spain and Portugal. There was a huge gap uh, between the Spanish economy and the rest of Europe. But over five to seven years, actually, the gap reduced uh, very, uh, very well. This is happening no more. And actually, uh, the economic crisis uh, created, on the contrary, a divergence engine. So now the question is how you restore this convergence um, engine. And this is why the Commission has come forward with a proposal that you may have heard of, which is the European Pillar of Social Rights. This uh, proposal is designed, indeed, to restore convergence. This is a framework for convergence between member states on employment and social conditions. And um, the idea, and I really want to underline this, is not to dictate from Brussels how employment and social policies should be designed in member states. We fully respect subsidiarity. We fully respect the fact that decisions on employment and social policies have to be taken by member states within national circumstances in many cases, by the way, by social partners themselves in member states. But what we want is actually to set some common objectives. Some common objectives meaning respecting the fact that member states have different starting points and will move at different speeds. The process is designed to create convergence on the objectives. So I really want to stress the importance of this proposal and also call for the involvement of Ireland in the endorsement and the finalization of the principles, the 20 principles, which are the core of this um, agenda. Um, let me turn briefly to the Irish economy. As I said, the recovery is strong. It is actually very impressive. The GDP growth uh, in uh, 2016, 5.2%. Um, this is well above the euro area average. And if I look uh, at unemployment, this is extremely impre impressive because uh, the figures have moved down from 15% uh, two or three years ago to 6%, and this is on, in less than five years. So if I compare it 
to the evolution in other member states, this is a very strong and improving uh, performance. And at the same time, what uh, I think is important is to note is the fact that this recovery is also a job-rich recovery. Job creation has happened uh, in different sectors of the economy. And uh, actually, what uh, you are seeing now is a number of unwanted consequences of this very sustained growth. And these are perhaps the challenges on which the Commission is drawing your attention today and is making some recommendations. So these recommendations concern, in particular, of course, the issue of inclusion, which the Minister mentioned, and which is quite important. Um, actually, I want to uh, make a reference to Mario Draghi. Mario Draghi, uh, 18 months ago, made a speech which I found uh, strange for a central banker, because his speech was about long-term unemployment. He said the major drag for the European economy is going to come from long-term unemployment. And basically, his point is it's fine to have a recovery, but what is happening is that the people who have skills they are returning to the labor market. But what about the parts of the population who do not have skills, who have social issues, who have childcare problems? What do you do about them? And he said, this is where we all need to put the focus, because the success and the prosperity of the EU economy will come from resolving uh, the issue of long-term unemployment. So that's why we are stressing uh, the issue of inclusion, recognizing at the same time that Ireland has taken important steps, um, in particular to improve the incentive to take up employment, but also to curb child poverty. The other issues um, I would like to mention, again, um, issues coming from a growth which is fairly sustained, is housing. Um, I'm sure you are more aware and more familiar with the issue than me, but I, I think it's really important to look at this issue, uh, which is about providing social housing. And for me, I see it as an issue where the government has clearly a responsibility, but uh, to a large extent, the responsibility is about making sure that there is more private investment in uh, housing. I would also mention skills. Skills is actually the number one issue. And as I said, um, Earlier, in a situation where the economy is moving so fast, when skills become obsolete, obsolete from one day to the next, you really need to have in place education systems which work with uh, labor markets and businesses to make sure that the transitions between jobs can be as small as possible. And there in Ireland, as you know, there is a particular issue about uh, the part of the population who has only basic skills. I think it's quite important uh, to design some measures in order to help them to get uh, um, not only basic skills, but skills which allow them to take up jobs in the labor market which are meaningful and uh, which are quality jobs. And I just want to say um, that what is happening in the economy is also the fact that you have a lot of these uh, low skills jobs which now require new skills. For example, if you take a waiter today in a restaurant, very often you will see him or her using an iPad and speaking different foreign languages. So for me, that means actually having skills which are more than what is required for a, a low skills job. So we have to pay attention to that. And again, this is something on which we would uh, wish Ireland uh, should focus in the future. Finally, I, I need to mention childcare. I think the provision of childcare is something which is hugely important. This is something which is really a trigger, especially uh, to improve the female participation uh, to the labor uh, market. Um, finally, and in conclusion, I'd like to say two things. One, to talk about uh, the elephant in the room, or rather, as I heard this morning, the mammoth in the tundra, Brexit. I just want to... Uh, to repeat something which is absolutely um, crucial for us. Michel Barnier was uh, in Dublin a, a few weeks ago, and he said it, and I'm sorry, I think, I, I feel I need to repeat it. For us, the particular situation of Ireland is absolutely clear. We understand it, and we will take it up as one of the key points in the negotiations. So we realize the importance of the Good Friday Agreement, 
we realize the importance of the CTA, and we will make sure that uh, actually the deal, and I hope there will be a deal, the deal that comes out of the negotiation defends the interest of the EU, but also defends fully the interest of Ireland. I think it's important to say. My final word, if I may, is for the social partners. Because recently, uh, thanks to Jean-Claude Juncker, we wanted the semester process, the country-specific recommendations, but also our economic discussions with countries, to be more rooted in the social dialogue to be more rooted in the work of the social partners. And I want, uh, again, if I may, to say that I like very much how the social dialogue is working in Ireland. It is consensual. I'm sure you have difficult discussions, but I see also many member states in which the social dialogue does not work, in which social, in which social partners have difficulties to be in the same room together. And I, I want to say that here it is different, and this is, again, one of the conditions for the economic success. Again, our analysis in the Commission, we see a lot of member states, so we have the possibility to compare. And what I can see is that in the economic crisis, the countries that have weathered the crisis well are also the countries in which the social dialogue is constructive, is working well, and where the social partners are really taking their responsibility seriously. So I want to encourage the social partners to continue in this way, and I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.